to flourish. Oh my gosh, my teammates and I cannot believe that we've already completed 13 weeks of flourish. It's hard to believe this is our last time together, isn't mm, it everyone? Yes. But it has been a delightful season. We have loved this time with you. You know, after each season, we leave you with a challenge or an encouragement, something to do, um, something that you can do as you move forward until we come and regather again. So after season one, we encouraged you all to love one another and serve one another by washing each other's feet. Correct, ladies? Right. We all know how special that is. And then after season two, we left you with the encouragement, with a challenge to share the gospel with holy boldness to all those people around you that don't yet know Jesus. Well, here we are at the close of season three. I've got our whole teammates gathered and we wanna leave you with another action, something that you can do. We well, you know the heart of all of us here is that we will live in such a way that our lives give glory to Jesus, that we'll grow in his word and that everyone will know that we are his followers. And that's really a fulfillment or um, of, of a scripture in Isaiah that says it's all about Jesus' name, his, that he's made more famous, his renown. That's what we're excited about. And we're praying that that's what your heart is as well. So. We're gonna end this last season with another action. And that is no matter what you're walking through in life, whenever you're going through a tough storm or a difficult trial, that you will know the promises of God, believe the promises of God and stand on them. So that's what we're gonna to do today. And I've got my whole team here to help us learn this exciting lesson. So let's start off with a couple verses and we'll go one by one, starting with you, Kathleen. Yes. So in Psalm 145, verse 13, it says, the Lord is faithful to all, all of his promises and loving toward all he has made. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gina. Yes, in Hebrews 10, 23, it says, let us hold tightly to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promises. Mm, so good. Man, and then I love Joshua. 2145, not one of all the Lord's good promises mm -hmm. to his children failed. Yes. Every one was fulfilled. Mm. Love Isn't that. that. Amazing? Yes. Laura. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse 20 A. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes mm. in Christ. Mm. Love that beautiful verses that remind us our God is a promise keeping God. So how do we walk through trials in life? Which by the way, this is our home church setting. So would you jump in and join us as we celebrate Jesus together and we learn how we can stand on God's promises. So first of all, we need to know what his promises are. Then we need to believe them. And then we need to stand on them when we're struggling. So what are some of those promises, guys? Who's got one they can share with us? Who's gonna start, well, Laura? I love that we have freedom from fear. And this is confirmed in Isaiah chapter 41, 10. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. Mm. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Oh, wow. Awesome. You know, that verse always spoke to me because um, just think about, I was married for 22 years and then all of a sudden it ended and I had no idea mm. what I would be wow. or what life was gonna look like. And so I held on to that verse and the Lord has walked me through it faithfully, mm. step by step all the way through and continues to do so. Mm. so That's beautiful, that Gina. Verse. Yeah, so good. Mm. Sure. Um, God also promises peace to us in the middle of our troubles. He supplies our peace. Um, in John 16, 33, he says, I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In this world you mm. will have tribulation, mm. but take heart, I have mm. overcome the world. Mm. Mm. Praise mm. God. Oh, wow, not a day. Oh. Not a day goes by that I don't think about that verse. I mean, we have troubles, large and small, every single day. Mm -hmm. And I tend to get stressed out. Mm -hmm. And then I remember that verse and that promise that God is overcoming and his power is for me and his peace is available. Mm -hmm. So stress doesn't have to be inevitable. It can be optional, mm -hmm. especially when we have God's promises. Mm -hmm. Wow, Lisa, that makes me think of his promise of rest 
That's one of my favorite promises. And in Matthew 11, 28, 29, he says, come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Mm -hmm. And who isn't weary and burdened, right? Sometimes take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle mm. and humble in heart yeah. and you will find rest for your souls. Mm. Okay. Wanna... Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Bruce. Mm. Yes, that verse and that promise has been so important to me uh, as in my wife. We went through a difficult time in our relationship and it even led to uh, a time of separation where we weren't together. Mm. And that weighed so heavy uh, on our hearts. But uh, God was... Uh, faithfully was there and helped mm. us come back together. And these promises were the ones that we really held on to. Mm. And it gave us a lot of hope mm -hmm. through that whole time of trial. Wow, wow. that's beautiful, Bruce. Thank you for sharing, Bruce, mm -hmm. because God does promise that he is going to comfort us. Mm -hmm. um, I love what it says in 2 Corinthians 12, 9 through 10. It says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. power is made perfect in weakness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly of my weaknesses, mm -hmm. so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, mm -hmm. and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm -hmm. wow. Amen. Can I share something on that one? Yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so quick story. I um, was in the middle of... Uh, a tough season in my life, an exhausting season, and I was preparing for it. I was up against this big deadline um, with an event, and I just remember crying out to God in desperation, and instead of him giving me an answer um, with a plan that mm. made sense to my mind, he uh, encouraged me to embrace my weakness mm. and to uh, trust him that he was mm. going to work it out, and I didn't know if that meant the conference was going to fall apart or what, um, and sure enough, he... Um, performed miracle after miracle after mm, miracle wow. and it was honestly the most powerful conference we'd ever been a part wow. of which is so cool. wow wow Gosh, you know, all these different um, testimonies, even though they're short, they are powerful. And, and you may be sitting here listening and going, well, I've got trials in my life, but what happens when I don't believe those promises or I struggle with doubt? You know, there's a couple things that I remember from scripture. One, I love it in the Psalms, Jesus or God says that he remembers we're made of dust. Mm -hmm. He remembers we're just dust people. And so in that, you know, he remembers and we recognize we're human. Yeah. We're not perfect. We are gonna make mistakes. Mm -hmm. Then there's another verse in Lamentations, another great verse. I know y'all are familiar with this and it talks about how God's mercies are new every single Amen. morning. Amen. So you have a rough day, a day you forget to do whatever. You take a deep breath like Kathleen just did. And we say, the sun comes up. It's another new day. God's full of brand new mercies for today. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, tomorrow's another day. And then there's another verse that I love. And that is that God, uh, well, this is when Jesus was healing a son of a man. And the man, you know, believed that Jesus had the power. And then Jesus asked him, do you believe? Mm -hmm. And, and the, the dad says, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but help me with my unbelief. Because yeah. there's that part in us, yeah. again, where we're human, that dust part of us made of the earth, mm -hmm. that we do struggle with unbelief. So if you struggle with unbelief, just say, Jesus, help me with my unbelief, and then go back to those promises. Yes. Believe those promises and stand on them. So what are some more promises, you know, gang? Joanne? Yeah, Candy. Yes. Um, there's, he also promises to provide for those who grieve in mm. Zion, and he bestows on them a crown of beauty instead of mm. ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, mm. and a spirit, a garment, a garment that we get to wear of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Mm. It actually says, um, that's what it says. I just mm -hmm. read it. <laughs> <laughs> and you, and read you know what, Candy? <laughs> yes, but that's such an amazing promise. Mm -hmm. yes. It is. Yeah. And it is. Candy, that oh. it brings me to tears because, kind of like Bruce, my husband and I went through, almost got divorced, mm -hmm. and I almost left, and mm -hmm. I thought my marriage was dead and broken. Mm -hmm. 
And it was definitely broken and I was in despair because I saw no hope. But God bind up my mm -hmm. broken heart. Mm -hmm. Then he transformed our marriage and made our marriage alive. Mm -hmm. And now the rest of that verse, I love it, says, then we become an oak of righteousness mm -hmm. planted for his glory. So now our marriage shows who mm -hmm. he is and his power. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's Angel, that's awesome. beautiful. Yes. And that reminds me of another promise that when we're overwhelmed, his presence is with us. Mm -hmm. This is in Isaiah 43, 2. It says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. Mm -hmm. The flames will not set you ablaze. Mm -hmm. just a Amazing. Powerful verse. Yeah. Candy, you know, as you were reading that verse, I kept hearing the when, the when, the when. It's not like we're not going to go through brutal, mm, hard right? times. Mm -hmm. But in the when, God's presence is with us. Um, quick story. Last year, my husband was diagnosed with cancer, aggressive cancer. And mm. that first shock, you know, we were passing through the waters. And God said, I will be with you. Then, you know, surgery and, oh, no, the cancer spread. Walking through the rivers, God said, they will not sweep over you. I am with you. And then finally, that fiery, bless his heart, my husband, you know, chemotherapy is awful for those of you that have gone through it. Was he set ablaze? No. God was with us. God is with us no matter what. Amen. His presence comforts. Oh, yeah. Kathleen, that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Through the toughest trials of the life. Worst, yes. Yeah. Another promise. Yes. yes. Um, I'm thinking of along those lines, but with temptation. Uh, with temptation, uh, God mm -hmm. says that he promises a way of escape. When we're tempted, mm -hmm. um, no temptation has overtaken you except this is common to mankind. Um, but God is faithful, who will not tempt you beyond what you are able. Mm -hmm. He'll always provide a way of escape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, yeah, before you go on, Sharon, I know you want to share something, but boy, I love that. I have to say, you know, you may be looking at us and we're all in our nice, you know, pretty clothes mm -hmm. and we're on this beautiful set and you may be thinking life in America is perfect. These mm -hmm. people probably never struggle. Mm -hmm. I want you to know that we all struggle not only with trials, but also, as Lisa said, with temptations. Mm -hmm. You know, we are human and there are going to be times that we are going to struggle not to sin. Yeah. And um, when we do sin, because we are all fallen, the first yeah. response that we can have is falling um, into repentance, asking God to forgive us for whatever we've done. But I love what that verse says, Lisa, because it says when we're tempted to sin, there is always a way of escape. God always has an escape hatch. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in a house that's on fire and you're looking for a way to get out, if that fire is your sin, God's always got a, a window or a door or something that you can climb through to get away from it. So what I often do, I don't know about y'all, but if I'm tempted to sin, especially if it's one that I, I, it's kind of a, not a habitual thing, but one I can easily fall into, one for me is exaggerating. I can sometimes kind of stretch things just a bit. And if I'm tempted to do that, I'll say, Lord, show me that escape plan. Help me to stand on what's true, not to stretch the truth, but to stay within those bounds. So anyway, I love that God always has a plan of escape for us when we're tempted to sin. That's awesome. Thank Go you, ahead, Julie, Sharon. I love that. Well, I also think about how when, when we need help, and protection, we pray Isaiah 54, 17, which says, no weapon forged against yes. you mm. will prevail, and you will yeah. refute every tongue that accuses you. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and this is their vindication from me, declares the Lord. Yeah. Wow. wow, you know. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. Sharon, thanks for sharing that. That, that verse really resonates with me. Um, in my past, I lived a, a, a very worldly lifestyle, uh, partying and drinking, um, not the best, you know. Um, and I prayed a lot for healing in that area of my life. And the Lord showed up. And he was the reason that 
that I was victorious over that area of my life. So that mm. came to fruition with that. So That's awesome, Tommy. Wow. And you know, Tommy is our, excuse me, Jessica, Tommy is my son. And just to sit here with him and to hear him share this, I cannot tell you what honor that brings to myself and my husband to see that God is a promise keeping God. If you're a parent and you have a child yes. that struggles yes. or a marriage, several people have mentioned marriages and marriages that, that is struggling. Remember, our God is a God of possibility. Mm -hmm. And when we believe his word, when we stand on the truth of his scripture and we pray and press in and ask him to do do the impossible, he will. And my handsome son here is perfect testimony of that, of how God has redeemed and restored. Yes. And here now he is in full-time ministry. So don't give up hope, people. Stand yes. on the promises of God. Yeah. Jessica. I'll share one more if you want to pass it. Yes. So this is actually my favorite, probably my favorite promise. I don't know if that's fair to God's word, but uh, uh, in Hebrews 13, um, verse five, the end of verse five into verse six, it says, um, for he has said, meaning God has said, for he has said, keep, uh, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So we can confidently say the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? Mm. Wow. Mm. Beautiful wow. promise, Jessica. Anybody else? Candy. Well, just you mentioned fear. Mm -hmm. Fear is something that it will it'll lock me up. Mm. It will lock me up. And I just really have been praying recently just to just to, you know, let God have control of that mm -hmm. in me because it so will really good. keep me from living my life the way that I know he wants me to live. Right. And he answers that prayer when mm -hmm. I really get it in my heart and I start mm -hmm. talking about, you know, what's going on. He right. always, he always comes to my rescue. Wow. He praise gives God. gives me that way out. Yeah. Always. That escape. Yeah. And isn't it like a step by step kind of thing? Mm -hmm. So it's not like, we might just get rid of fear totally, mm -hmm. but when we feel it, we can give it to him and then he exactly. transforms it, mm -hmm. makes it different. That beauty out of ashes, right? Right. Uh, amen. I clung to um, Romans chapter eight. It talks about the future glory, the mm -hmm. promise of our future glory. And I know we go through seasons of suffering. And so I just want to call out Romans eight eighteen. I consider that our present sufferings mm. are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Mm. And then you can skip down to verse 28, that we are conquerors. We are mm. more than conquerors through Jesus. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Mm. So... It just, there's, you know, just verse after verse, yes, you know, yes. and there's different times in our lives when we really hone in on all these different mm. promises from the different experiences that we are facing. Mm. So right. good. So yeah. good. What, one, of, oh, I forgot. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> one of the promises that remind me of is Isaiah 30, 15, when we were going through some of our mm. marital struggles and it says, in quietness and confidence mm, is that verse. your strength. Yeah. And that was just my breath prayer. I, that's all I could do was just breathe that prayer and focus on that prayer. And and, and that's enough. Mm. He gives us a lifeline when we're in those desperate places. Mm. Absolutely. You know, um, God's promises are endless. God's word is full of promise after promise after promise. So as you're listening today, and perhaps one of these verses or a couple of these verses are really popping out to you, my goodness, if you have a Bible, I, I, I hope that you'll go mark that verse you know, in your Bible, underline it, highlight it so you can refer to it time and again. If you don't have a Bible, most of the ver these verses are gonna be listed on your screen. So maybe if you have your phone, you can take a picture of it so you can you know, refer to that verse over and over again. And we're just barely scratching the yeah. surface yeah. on nice. the promises of God because God's word as you said, Laura, is full of so many mm. promises because our God is a promise keeping God. Yes. And he wants to fulfill the longings and the desires of your heart, of all of our hearts. Yes. Okay, so before we close in prayer, I can't believe again, this is our last, no. our last oh, episode, our last program of the season. Do we have one or two more promises that anyone, Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> Go, Sharon. No. 
Thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> well, I was thinking about all the times that I blow it <laughs> and uh, that I fall and fail. And then the next morning I'm crying. Oh, Lord, forgive me. And you know he does. Um, but this is a verse that I love praying. And it's out of Micah yeah. uh, 7, 8, 9, and 10. Mm. It says, Rejoice not over me, O mm. my enemy, when I fall. I mm. shall rise. Yes. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. Mm -hmm. I will bear the yeah. indignation of the Lord because I've sinned against him until he pleads my cause, mm. which that's the cross. Mm -hmm. And he executes judgment for me and he will bring me out to the light mm. and I shall look upon his vindication and then my enemy will see and shame will cover him who said, where is the Lord your mm. God? Mm. So awesome the Lord verse. raises us up. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes, awesome. Yes. Anyone else? One more, maybe? One more promise? There's so many. Oh, you got one? Yes. Oh, I don't have my glasses. So here, that might be a problem. Want to borrow mine? <laughs> <laughs> this is like real life. <laughs> Let's hope I don't break him. Um, Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4. This is my morning prayer. When I get up in the morning and you know you're just some mornings you get up and you're just like, I can't do this day. Yes. <laughs> this is the Lord's verse and promise to me. The Lord has given me the tongue of those who mm. are taught that I yeah. may know how to sustain with a word him who is weary. Yes. Mm. Morning by morning, he awakens me. Mm. He awakens my ear to hear as those who are taught. Mm. Mm. Morning by morning, he awakens. Mm. Mm. Amen, yes. Kathleen, that's a beautiful verse. My gosh, God's word is fathomless. It is endless. So many beautiful, not only promises, just so many beautiful words of encouragement. Well, um, we are winding down our time together. And so there's a couple things we would like you to do with what we've talked about, about God's promises. So when you're facing difficulties, and we know you will, someone read the verse in this world, you will have tribulation, mm -hmm. but take heart, I have overcome the world. So when you're walking through those difficulties, we want you to remember God's promises, believe them and then stand on them. And secondly, make a list, make your own list and write it on a piece of paper, put it in your Bible so that you can refer to it often of the promises that God has given you. Mm -hmm. And specifically, maybe against a specific trial or situation that you can list that promise and pray for it every time you think of that problem. And then three, and this is one of my favorite things to do. When you get in bed at night and you lay your head on your pillow, cry out to God. Tell him whatever it is you're struggling with. Mm -hmm. He already knows, but he cares and he wants to hear. Mm -hmm. Tell him what you're struggling with. Petition him. Ask him to fulfill the promises of his word because he will do that. Yeah. And then we are going to close in a special way today. Um, we want to pray for all of you in Iran. Um, but before we, so I'm going to kind of do our closing before we pray. And I'm going to read a verse to you, but... We just want to thank you for joining us um, this season with 13 episodes of Flourish. It has been a delight and a joy. We love you so much, so much. And I want to read this passage out of the Bible from Revelation. And this is what it says. It says, after this, I look, I looked and behold a great, I can't even read this, you guys, it's not bright enough. Um, after this, I looked and behold, a great multitude that no one could number from every nation and from all tribes and peoples and languages, all were standing before the throne of, the, of God and the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. And look, at there's a little palm branch on our side wall, if you notice on that picture. They, were, they had palm branches in their hands and they were waving them and crying out with a loud voice saying, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb who is Jesus. And all the angels were standing around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and they worshiped God. Yeah. 
every tongue, every tribe, every nation. We are praying for you, that we will meet you at the throne one day, that our nation of America, your nation of Iran or Afghanistan or wherever you are in the Persian world, that we will meet you at the throne. We probably won't meet you this side of heaven, but we wanna see you at, your, at the throne. So if you have not given your heart to Jesus yeah. yet, would you do it right now? Would you pray with us and say, God, I am a sinner. I believe that Jesus is more than a prophet. Jesus is the Son of God. Mm -hmm. Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me for my sins. I want to be your child. I want to be at the throne in eternity. We want to meet you there. So let's all lift out our hands and we are going to end this time praying for you, praying not only for your salvation, mm -hmm. praying for you that you can stand on the promises of yes. God, praying that God will be victorious in your life and through the situations that you're dealing with, praying for you as you need prayer. So team, Yay. First of all, we say goodbye. We love you. Bye, we love you. And now we're going to pray for you in Jesus' name. Oh, Father. Oh, Father Jesus, thank you for our friends in Iran and Afghanistan and all the world. Jesus, we lift them up to you. We pray for their so they will know that you are using a perfect will over their life. Lord God, thank you for the plans you have for them. Thank you to prosper you. Thank you that you